Hey there. I've got a question for you. It'll help you decide if you want to stick around and watch this video. So, do you want to learn a songwriting exercise that'll help you increase your output with new and original songs that you like and vibe with? Wouldn't it be nice to sit down to write a song without any ideas or inspiration and come out the other end with something every time that you vibe with? If that sounds cool, then stick around because I want to teach you how to play a game called Under the Influence. Now, it's just going to take me a few minutes to explain, so you can ditch out of here as soon as I finish explaining, or you can watch me do it in practice. So, how do you play? You choose a song that you vibe with. For this example, I have chosen Small Town Witch by the Sneaker Pimps. So, once I've made that decision and chosen that song, I'm going to hop on my computer or my phone and they have an app available for Android and iOS. It's called Cortify. Cortify allows me to get the tempo, the key, and the chord information of the song. There are other ways to do it, like I could go to Ultimate Guitar if it's a guitar driven song. Um, there, there are many ways to get at this information, but Cortify has made it the most easy for me. So, link in the description for that, Cortify.net. There is a premium subscription involved, um, but there is a free version, and I think you get like three songs a day or something like that. So, uh, let me switch screens and I'll show you what we're looking for on Cortify. So here we are on the Small Town Witch page on Cortify. I just went to Cortify.net, then I searched for Small Town Witch, but here's a link to it from the last time I was here. I'm going to go straight to the Diagrams tab, and then I'm going to click Summary, and I'm going to set it to Piano, because I'm going to be using Piano for this. Those are the chords that I can use that you see right there. Not these up here, we're going to ignore these. Here's my key. D minor. Here's my tempo, 103. Here are the chords that I'm allowed to use in the song when it comes to the actual writing of the song. Next, I'm going to buy a copy of the MP3. I went to Amazon, bought and downloaded it. Next, I went into FL Studio, lined the song up on the grid after setting my project tempo to match the tempo of the Sneaker Pimp song. Map out the song structure to the best of your ability. So for me, I listened to it and I noticed the following. An intro, low energy, an intro with medium energy, and then there's a intro with high energy. So three part intro, a verse, goes straight into the chorus from the verse. You come out of the chorus into an interlude. The interlude goes into an instrumental or pre-verse, and then there's a verse, another chorus. I made a note to myself that there's a lead guitar that comes halfway through the second chorus. There's an out uh, chorus out. The reason I noted that differently is because the delivery and the arrangement of the last chorus is different than the one that's immediately before it, so I felt it warranted its own song marker. And then there's an outro. And so once you have all those, you have the blanks that you need to fill in, right? You have a... Let's go to Arrangement View. Let's just go to Vocal Final. And I'll zoom out, and you can see here that if I double click, I'm basically just filling in vertically the section and then moving on to another section. So those are the basics of how you play. When it comes to the rules and the, the idiosyncrasies, I'll mention them along the way in this video. But this little songwriting exercise of mapping out the song structure and then being limited to the chords that are used in the song is proven invaluable to me when it comes to having the motivation to write but not having any ideas. That's one of my biggest struggles as a songwriter is I'll sit down and not have an idea in my head. Not even one. 
but I'll still be able to sit down and write out a complete instrumental track that I can put lyrics to later. And along the way, I get to have tons of fun. I come up with several ideas for songs almost every time. And this has increased my output over 100%. When I started this year, I was chunking out maybe 10 songs a month, eight to 10, eight to 12, something like that. As February began, I took on this challenge of writing a new song every day, and I failed. I, I still don't write every single day, but I did manage to take that output of 8 to 12 songs and turn it into 20 to 30 a month. Yes, I've had some 30-day months and uh, one 31-day month, uh, one 31 song month, excuse me. And I was able to do that by using the song structure pre-writing that I just showed you that's a part of Under the Influence. By mapping out your song structure when you sit down to write, you're going to finish more songs because you know exactly what other sections are required for you to wrap up this song, hopefully, hopefully. The reason Under the Influence I think works so well is because whenever I feel stuck, I can lean on the original material of the song that I've selected, in this case, Small Town Witch by the Sneaker Pimps, and I create something new. In this case, I created a song called Mr. Shambles, which I am super proud of, and you're about to see the behind the scenes of how I made it from the beginning all the way through to the end. Now, this is a two-part video. Part one, we, t we handle all the instrumentation. Part two is all lyrics and vocals. It's the funnier of the two videos, I will admit, but there's a lot of learning packed into this video about how to move through and actually play under the influence. I've linked a video that's dedicated specifically on how to play under the influence in the description below, so do check that out. If you've enjoyed what you, you've seen so far or you're going to continue on and watch the studio session unfold, do hit that like button when you find yourself enjoying yourself. Do hit the subscribe button if you want to get notified of future videos like this. All right, let's jump in and make some Halloween-y music. This is how I made Mr. Shambles. All right, so as you can see in FL Studio, I've already dragged Small Town Witch into the project. And Small Town Witch is got a little bit of lead at the beginning so the next thing you would want to do is get it lined up on the grid so set your tempo the tempo for this song is 103 then you're going to want to probably kill the the dead space at the beginning or just grab this and move it to the next one beat so like right there on bar 10 you see where that big transient is that's your kick That's the first kick. So you want to get that lined up on the grid. And once you have that lined up on the grid, you're good to go and start labeling your song sections. Now, I did mine a little bit differently. I did mine by chopping off the tail. Or, excuse me, chopping off that dead space at the beginning so that mine starts on bar one. And then the downbeat here I can actually drag to the right just a wee bit so that it sits better on the grid. There we have it. And now, if I switch arrangements, I'm going to go to the reference arrangement here. You can see I've already laid in all of my song sections. For this particular project, we'll have a three-part intro, low, medium, and high energy. Then we go to a verse section, which is uh, matches the medium energy from the intro. Then the chorus, which matches the high intro, the high energy intro. Not exactly, like there's some distorted guitar and stuff in there. Then there's an interlude. Then there's a eight bar instrumental. Then another verse. Then a chorus followed by a chorus out. And the chorus out is different than the chorus before it in delivery as well as uh, arrangement. So that's why I've denoted it as two separate sections instead of just chorus times two or something like that. And then finally, there's the outro. The outro is really just a held sustained note and some lyrics over top of it. I've gone ahead and chosen some starting instruments. These may or may not be the instruments we finish with. 
but by order of appearance, we have a deep, thick bass. There it is. Nice and thick. Uh, nylon guitar. piano some tom drums those don't sound like toms because I, I, I was playing with them so let me reset them I think something like this is what they sounded like And then finally my 808 kit, so. This is a modified version of the stock FL Studio 808 kit. Uh, I believe the only thing I changed was I layered the kick. I added a tambourine instead of the cowbell and I replace that side stick to make it nice and fat. So that's what we're working with. Um, the drums are very dry here, but in the original song, uh, like the snare's got like a snap, uh, slap back delay or something like that on it, and we'll add that as we go. Now, let's talk turkey. The beginning of the song, Right here, intro low establishes this piano loop that I want to create. The intro medium introduces the drums. Intro high introduces the bass. So I think I'm going to tackle this intro section first because the drums go all the way throughout and uh, might as well, you know, the drums don't go all the way throughout. I think they're maybe not in the interlude and in the outro. But by tackling the drums first and analyzing the rest of the song to make sure I'm right, I'm pretty sure it's the same drum groove throughout. So what we're going to do is knock out the drums in one fell swoop, and then we'll move in on that bass line, which is uh, probably one of the big drivers of the song. So uh, yeah, let's get a new arrangement. And then we'll start here on intro medium. We need to create a four bar loop. So, new pattern. I'm going to study the song and write out my drum groove and then I'll be right back to explain it. All right, that was just a few minutes. That was, that was quick and easy. So the drum groove we have currently sounds like this. What I'm going to do to change this up a little bit, make the snare th sound a little bit thicker, is I'm going to copy this snare up to snare two. And then we're going to select and flam. Like that. I'm just turning down the velocity of the second hit so it sounds more like a slap back. And so now that we've got this done, what we're going to do is just resize, go back to bar mode, and then basically this beat can be pasted all over the place. Now it's time to come up with a bass line. So their bass line is awesome. Now I gotta come up with one that's awesome. To do that, we're gonna go to Chordify first and pull up 
the Sneaker Pimps Small Town Witch page. Once you've done that, you're going to click Piano and go to Summary, which I've already done here. And you can see this is in the key of D minor. And these are the notes that we can use for our bass line, these bold letters here. Uh, the way I like to play under the influence is with bass lines, you can only use the root notes of the chords that you have available in the song that you're using as the influence. So since we're using um, Small Town Witch, then we're limited to Small Town Witch's chords root notes. So we have a D, we have an A, an F, a B flat, I'm ignoring that A flat, an E and an A. So we'll just turn on the metronome. Start feeling out a beat with the bass. So I'm going to noodle around for a few minutes uh, off camera, see what happens, and try and create some magic for you guys. I'll be right back. All right, so that didn't take very long. A uh, couple of minutes and a little bit of processing later, I beefed up the kick because I wanted the kick to cut through when I started playing the bass so that I could hear it without having to turn up my volume because it's still kind of early. And... Uh, this is what I came up with. So, let's try and record that. So new pattern. This might take me a couple tries, so bear with me. I'll try and edit it so that you only have to watch the last take, the good take. Let's move backwards to the beginning of the song and knock out this piano part that I liked so much. This is, uh, I believe, an E piano, so I've selected this Rhodes E piano. I may replace it with something a little higher end, uh, but this is just stock FL Studio Flex and um, the Rhodes Mark I preset from Essential Pianos. And it sounds like this. So I think the best way to write this piano loop is going to actually be to create a new pattern and drag out about eight bars. Now we only need four bars. We only need four. But I'm thinking in terms of eight bars here because uh, it sounds like they've cut a loop in half. Like if you listen to... I, I'm pretty sure that since they sampled it, I can get away with playing just this part. So I'm going to play just this part. Guys, don't tell on me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Universal will probably mute this part of the video. Oh, 
It's actually a two bar loop. <laughs> Hear how another chord starts right at the end of it. Listen. Right on, um, I'm pointing at the screen like you can see my finger. Right there where the top of my arrow is, is the beginning of another chord. So yeah, uh, we only need four bars so that we can create a two bar loop. So I'm thinking in terms of four bars. Was pretty. Let's try that. This is what I mean by not really needing inspiration. I just know what chords I can use and what notes I can use. And because of that, I, I, I don't have to think about, about what I'm playing so much is just experiment until I find something that sounds good to me. And I, I find stuff pretty quickly this way, as you can tell. to sample this part. I'm, I'm saying sample in air quotes here because this isn't going to be an actual sample. What we're going to do is this right here. Uh, I don't know if this works, but there's only one way to find out. I'm not going to be embarrassed, are you? piano riff that I wrote right there like it works and it's using just a D minor chord and then playing a little sprinkle over top of it with the right hand all right so the next thing we're going to work on is the second half of the first verse there is a guitar arpeggio that comes in and I was scratching my brain here for how I'm going to tackle this and I had an idea see I have this uh, VST called Riffer. Riffer writes melodies for you locked to a specific key. Other than that, it's random. And I only need eight bars. So what I'm thinking is of using Riffer to write the riff for me because I'm lazy. And plus it writes stuff that I would just never think of to put together because it's a computer and I'm not. So here's the first thing it wrote. Sorry, that took a second to set up. Now that may not sound like much to you, but that's something I can start with. So. Let's close Riffer. 
open pattern form piano roll. Go to Ace Nylon, close our mixer. to see what section I want to work on next. I'll be right back. So as you can see, the project has changed a little bit since you last saw it. That's because I realized I had enough components to pretty much build out the skeleton of the entire song. And I was just finishing that up right now. And now it's time to add more parts. So the chorus has this cool distorted guitar, if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to refresh myself with what the chorus sounds like in um, Small Town Witch by Sneaker Pimps. And then I'm going to come back and write some guitar on my own. So a few minutes ago, I was bragging to myself about how I was able to block out the skeleton of the entire song at this point. And I was wrong. The chorus is different than the verse in terms of bass line and the other elements that it uses. The drum groove is the only part that remains the same or similar. So there's a couple things that change about the drum groove. For example, there's a clap in the left ear, and in the right ear there's what sounds like a noise-based crash cymbal or hi-hat pattern or something like that. And it, it's really cool because on the left side you've got claps on every quarter beat and then on the right you've got the hi-hats going on I think eighth notes or something like that and uh, the way it's mixed it, it just works on top of the the bass drum groove and then there's like a, a rock bass or an electric bass however you want to say it um, playing bar bass notes so held notes sustained notes um, that change every bar and the guitar is following the bass I do believe mostly it's deviating a little bit and that's a tremolo picking style which I'm not good at so my guitar will probably just be octaves um, played at 16th notes line moves a little bit faster than the one in the small town witch song but that's okay um, now to see if it works in context so to do that we're gonna go back a couple bars to bar 25 so that we get the transition from the intro to the acoustic guitar and then that transition from the acoustic guitar part to the chorus tracking some claps. So I've got my microphone over here off camera. Forgive me for a second while I set it up.
So, with the clap selected, we're going to push play. hit is a little bit early if you were wondering I wanted to see how it would sound if every now and then there was an odd hit and it doesn't sound awful but I think I want it like in between those two places yeah. like that four bars of crash hits. Now let's turn off the mixer and take a look at these levels. So we're, we're wanting to follow the accents of the let's do an accent on the one of each bar. <laughs> Let's add another hit right here. And right here.
Tambourine time, y'all. There's also a tambourine. Um, let me check how it's used. I think it's 16th notes. All right, so I've had a listen, and I think the tambourine is actually doing the same thing as the crash. So I'm just going to, uh, well, it's doing something very similar as the crash. So in pattern seven, we're going to add the tambourine there as well, since this is for the chorus and just the chorus. Uh, and that's how it'll get reused as well. Um, we're going to go to the piano roll, get the drums out of the way. There is our pattern for the crash. So on the tambourine, we're just going to do the same thing. Except we're not going to double up the hits at the end on the turnaround like we did with the other. And hopefully the tambourine coming down the center is going to glue the left and right channels of the percussion together because right now they feel kind of disparate. Let's see what that sounds like. I think I want 16th note hits on the tambourine. swing it a little bit. processing so let's create a reverb send and then for this project I think I will use Rome This is a Native Instruments plugin that I got for free several years ago. I'm not sure if it's still free, but you could pull this off with Fruity Reverb too as well. What we're going to do is just turn the mix all the way up. Get a little bit of pre-delay going at about 14, 15 milliseconds. Cut out all the lows. Turn the highs down to about 5, 6K. Make sure the size is nice and long. And then we're going to sand the sambur sand the tambourine. We're going to send the tambourine to the verb send. Now it sounds like this. <laughs>
Okay, so let's talk about the guitar. There are, from what I can tell, at least two layers of guitar in Sneaker Pimp's song, uh, Small Town Witch. There is a left guitar, which is doing a tremolo guitar picking sort of thing. I'm probably just going to do octaves over on the left side. And on the right side, it sounds like there's a fuzz guitar or something like that playing along with the bass in power chords. So that's what I'm going to model my chorus section to be like is left channel is going to be a tremolo guitar pattern or uh, an octave guitar pattern played in 16th notes, something like that. And then the right ear is going to be power chords that follow the bass line and we're going to see if that balances things out. It should, but I'm not certain. I might reverse that and make it so that the right ear is the fast pattern and the left ear is the slow pattern because right now the claps are in the left ear and the uh, crashes are in the right ear. Tambourine is down the center, so most of the movement is happening in the left ear, I do believe. Let's find out if that's true. So on the screen there, you can see I've got the reference pulled up. I'm going to switch over to the arrangement where we're working. This is what we're working with right now. So I think I want to try the octaves first. So today we are playing an Epiphone Les Paul Florentine. This is a 2014, I think. So let's turn this on, turn off recording, and then what we want to do is take and rename our channel so that we know what it is. This is a clean guitar. And we want it. certain if it's the right kind of rhythm. So what I want to do now is get another guitar channel. I'm going to go ahead and pan it hard right like this. Not hard right, but three quarters right. And then add another instance of guitar rig. section which is the instrumental I've also done some processing on panning and 
something and, and some mixing here and there to, to try and get everything sitting in the mix the way that I imagine it being closer towards the end. And wow, this guitar looks vibey on screen. It almost looks metallic. Neat. Um, so yeah, let's lay down an instrumental. I've got an idea in my head. Let's just see if we can capture it. So every time you see me lean forward and go, and a one, that means I'm gonna record something. So, and a one. <laughs> I don't know how I messed that up.
idea, so we're going to try and stick with that if I can. script a little bit from the small town witch song that we're using as the inspiration and that's okay because at this point I'm feeling creative I'm feeling loose and I have a song structure to work to so I'm not too terribly worried about sticking with the original inspiration here I'm more concerned about sticking with the vibe and expanding on it and, and trying to make something fun and interesting in mind so I like the solo part, but I don't think I need all that stuff during the verse. I, that's the part that's truly different. Um, aside from just saying that there's an instrumental here, uh, there is no instrumental underlying the verse that I can recall from Small Town Witch. So whether or not I leave that in, I don't know yet. But let's move on. Okay, so I took a break, came back. And I kind of finished mapping out the song. So it's time to move on to lyrics. There's only a few more things that I added. So let's show you that really quick. And then I'm going to go write some lyrics and record some scratch vocals. So here in the project, I finished laying out the entire arrangement without really writing anything new after the intro. Excuse me, after the instrumental that we just recorded. So I was like, okay, let's move on, which is the last thing you heard from me. And then after I finished that um, instrumental part, I was like, all right, let's tackle chorus out since it's a little bit different. And I was like, you know what? They may have done this differently. I'm going to finish this by just copying everything from the chorus and removing the guitars for the chorus out. So the chorus out doesn't use either of the two rhythm guitars that it had previously right here. So in the chorus out section, I brought back the instrumental guitar for the last half of the second chorus. It sounds like this. <laughs> One other thing that was missing, by the way, is uh, tom drums, tom fills. And so I wrote a single tom fill that I've used throughout the song. You can see it on track two here. 
all of these hits, those are tom fills that I, I wrote. It's just a simple to, uh, a simple eighth note, I want to say, tom fill. Yeah. And just like that, we've got ourselves nearly a five minute song, folks. 448. Not bad for a day's work. Now, this project took a lot longer than I expected because I'm dealing with a cold, and so I had to take a bunch of wimpy naps all day. But, it's time for my favorite part. Which is for me to sit down and figure out what the lyrics are to this song and record some vocals. So, like I was saying, it's probably going to have something to do with witches, no, I'm just kidding, not witches. Uh, with zombies or vampires? A witch could be thrown in there, actually. Like, a witch could curse somebody to wake up as a zombie? Perhaps. Or, or, a witch curses somebody's guitar so that whenever they play this certain riff on their guitar, it turns the people that hear it into zombies. And that little guitar riff is this. some lyrics and uh, I can't wait to see what I come up with this should be interesting all right great amounts of fun were had doing that and I think you can see from the video that inspiration does show up eventually uh, but it wasn't required to get from start to finish um, the parts where I got inspired I would say particularly are the guitar and right at the end there where I was talking about what I'm going to do lyrically. Uh, that was genuine surprise and excitement when I came up with the idea of a witch cursing a guy's guitar. Um, I thought that was such a fun idea and, and it's an homage to Small Town Witch too because their song was about a witch. Um, there's nothing that says you can't do that. So, if you enjoyed yourself, hit that like button Tap the subscribe button if you want to get notified when I release future videos. I have the second video ready to go, and by the time you see this, it will be available. So, video part two, vocals, in the description down below. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.